Good morning, everyone. Coming to you from Prince Edward Island, Canada, on the Atlantic uh, coast of Canada. And uh, it's a cold day out there. Uh, minus 12 with the wind chill. Yesterday we had a crazy day of snow and wind and rain and all those pieces. So uh, I have a bisque kiln going right now and I unloaded a glazed kiln yesterday morning. Um, didn't have time to film it. I uh, have a sick grandbaby, so I was helping take care of her. So anyway, excited to show you some things that have come out of the kiln. Uh, it's been a while since I've done a video. Christmas came, things got busy. You all know how it goes. Uh, and then it takes a while to build up enough stock to run a glaze kiln. So now I have two glaze kilns back to back because I have an online sale coming up. Um, so anyway, I thought I would show you a few things. And for those of you, I've heard seen questions online about, you know, can I fire outside and that kind of thing. So in my scenario, I live in Atlanta, Canada, it can be very cold. And uh, I have a kiln under my carport, so an open carport. I have a metal shed in that, and I have a Euclid kiln, and I fire in all weather. Now, in all honesty, it's probably a little harder on the kiln um, than if it was indoors. So maybe I'm cutting a little of the life off it, but it's a lot cheaper for me than uh, building a whole building and wiring it separately and all that stuff. And I'm not willing to fire in my house. And that's just my own personal preference. So that's a little bit about how I fire. Um, and this glaze load, we've got a lot of um, mid-brown clay. Uh, I think it's from Tucker's, I believe. And it's a, just a mid-brown stoneware. I don't remember the exact, mid smooth, no, that's the white. I can't remember the exact name of it, but it's just a mid grade. And tuck, I get my clays either from Tucker's in Canada or Potter's Playhouse, and they both have great clays. I've had great luck with all of them, and I use stoneware pretty well exclusively, so white stonewares and brown stonewares. All right, so I'm going to show you a few things. I'll be moving in and out of frame, and I apologize for that. Um, so I made these little mouse bowls. Trying to show you the little mice and I just glazed them so they have the, the mid brown clay and I just glazed them in a white and uh, just put the little mice on when they were leather hard and uh, maybe not quite leather hard close to leather hard so I made a bunch of those for my online sale and uh, I'm really pleased with these this is a new combo for me so this is, um, has some pinks in it and browns and specks, and it's got a white liner inside. And I've mentioned at previous videos um, that uh, I just use a white satin liner for most of my glaze interiors. I do not paint the inside of my glazes. And I usually do a combo of dipping, pouring, or painting. Um, but inside, typically, I try to pour because I don't have the patience paint inside so this had a uh, white poured inside uh, then I let that dry and typically if I'm if I'm doing the liners I'll try to let the the liners dry for two or three hours so the outside of the glaze outside of the cup or whatever I'm glazing has an opportunity to absorb as much glaze as it can so this one is uh, I did a quick dip in alabaster which is the base for winter wood then I painted on one coat of winter wood then i put splotches of coyote fairy rose and then i did a very light coat of flux over that just because i wanted to make sure i got some running because i knew i had lots of room for the glaze to run because of the way i did it i'm really happy with it i think it turned out really pretty um, fairy rose is a beautiful pink but it's a very strong pink so um sometimes i try to use it pretty sparingly and i think this application worked out really nice uh, so that turned out great. I was happy with that. It, overall, it was a pretty good kiln load. You know, sometimes you all do pottery. Sometimes um, kiln loads can be highly disappointing, and sometimes they can be really good. So this one was a good one. I think I only had one piece that I felt I might have to refire. So I made these mugs. They're called Papa Bear mugs. So it just says Papa and Bear. This one I did a full dip just in my studio dark blue and um, it turns a really deep, deep, deep navy on the brown clay. On the white clay, it's a more vibrant blue, but on the brown clay, it's this kind of deep navy blue. So I really like that. So I did uh, a few of those in some different shapes. And here's one more. 
So I do have some multiples in this uh, glaze load because I am getting ready for a sale. And you do want to do multiples of things sometimes if you want to be efficient with your time. Let's bring this closer so I'm not moving out of the frame all the time. This was just a little tester bowl I tried. And what I did with it fit was I dipped it in white and then I used, oh Lord, I forgot what they're called. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Designer liner. I used design, red designer liner just to put little hearts on it. And then a little heart in the bottom. So I was just having fun with that, kind of seeing how the designer liner would behave on top of the white glaze. And I did put it on quite thick and I could see it sort of lifting before I put it in the kiln and I thought, uh-oh. But it, it worked out fine except one little dot flew off it and landed on, of course, a plate. I'll tell you my plate story when I get to that, but um, it always happens that way, right? The one piece that you really don't want to have to refire or whatever is the one that gets the red dot. So then I did Mama Bear mugs and I did these in white and these were just a full dip in white. So um, when they're leather hard, I just put, I make an applique with my bear stamp and I use MKM uh, letter, letter tools, like the stamps, they're great. I've gotten, I paid a lot of money for them way back when, but oh my gosh, they paid for themselves a million times over. So I make the applique and then I stick it on the mug when it's leather hard, then let it dry and I bisque it. And then I just dip the whole thing and then wipe this back. And I, you have to be pretty careful when you're wiping this part or you can over wipe. For just for this particular one, when it's just letters, it's pretty simple actually. So I'm not gonna show you all of them, but I did, I think I did about six of those. And they've been really, really popular. Um, okay, same idea. I do these mugs called PEI Girl Mugs. Uh, they're probably one of my biggest sellers and they go everywhere, everywhere. There's PEI girls living in Canada, the US, wherever people seem to want a PEI girl mug to remind them of home. Um, so I do make a lot of those throughout the year. Um, I think I have six for this upcoming sale. So three of them are in white. I won't show you every single one, but this one is in a different um, treatment. So this one has a Laguna Power Turquoise poured inside, then dipped the Laguna Power Turquoise up to maybe the top third. The bottom is just my Studio Black. And then I do a band on the Power Turquoise, and I think I've showed this in previous videos, of the Coyote Gunmetal Green. So for those of you who love drips and are kind of experimenting and playing with that, uh, Coyote Gunmetal Green is a fun glaze to play with. It really does move. Um, it sh turns interesting colors depending on what you put it on. So uh, have some fun with that and try that if you're interested. Um, then this one, similar treatment. So white in the middle, so just, or inside, sorry, I just uh, poured that in there. Then I have the top third is Laguna Powered Turquoise. Bottom third is my studio, um, just soft turquoise. And then gunmetal green on the Powered Turquoise again. And this is just another treatment for that. So depending on the treatment, I do like to wipe back um, glazes just to give clay a more interesting look. Sometimes I'm trying to go for a more rustic feel, um, just wanting to let the clay shine through, whatever the reason. So uh, it's fun to play with that for sure. Um, this one is just a soft uh, pastel-y mug for the spring. So it's got my studio green on the bottom. It's got my studio mauve on the top, and then this would be blue hydrangea. And then this is a little strip of um, winter wood with a little bit of flux over it. So a lot of stuff happening there. And I think this was a refire. I think at first it was just my mauve, and I found it was a little bit blah. So that's why I put the uh, blue hydrangea on it, because then you get all these gold flecks and you get variations in colors and things. So um, sometimes refiring can help. Sometimes it doesn't, but it never hurts to try if you have a piece that you're trying to resurrect. This turned out really interesting and I'm really happy with it. So this would be um, my Studio White, my Studio Green, which turns this really vintage -y green on the dark clay and is this sort of lighter green on the white clay. So such a difference depending on the clay you use. So I did 
uh, probably the top third would be my dark blue studio blue. Bottom third would be my dark, my studio green. Then on the, on the studio blue, I put a coat of um, Mako shipwreck. And then a band of flux where the blue and the green met. And uh, look at the variation we're getting in there and the, the speckling and things and the drippage. Ooh, it's very pretty. I like that. And typically when flux hits this green, it'll turn this turquoise color. So you get all kinds of neat variations. Really happy with that one. This one I think is my new favorite. So this is my studio green, white inside. Top is my studio dark blue. Then I did a coat of olive float over the blue. Then I just did splotches of flux. I just, I didn't do flux over the whole thing. I just did splotches around it. So you get like almost like this waterfall effect. It's really pretty. I think I wanna do a big bowl in this. I think it would look really cool. And the other thing is, even though I do white on the inside, often I'll try to put flux and because typically there's some color on the lip, right? So I'll put flux on the inside just to get some interest and variation on the lip. So when people are looking inside the cup, there's something for their eyes to settle on. So that one's pretty, really like that. The next four I'm gonna show you are variations once again on that um, Laguna Power Turquoise uh, Coyote Gun Metal Green. And then I tried different colors on the bottom because I wanted to see what it looked like with some different options. So this is one with Pike's Purple. And uh, Pike's Purple, the recipe is in Exploring Mid-Range Glazes. It's a book by John Britt, and there's lots of great recipes in there. Um, and then this is Laguna Power Turquoise and the Gunmetal Green. So that's how that turned out. And white inside, of course. This one, same treatment on the top. Then on the bottom, it's my studio soft turquoise. You can tell I like blues and greens, I think. Okay, this one, this one is really interesting. This one is my studio deep brown. So it's like a clear brown, but it's very, very dark. And out in the sun, it'll sparkle because there's so much iron, uh, red iron oxide in the glaze that it, the, the iron will sparkle in the sun. But look what happened here. This is really interesting. I'm, I wanna play with this a little more with more brown. Um, so this would be the gunmetal green, and it's probably just where it overlapped the brown a little bit, and we're getting some really cool colors in the drips. So I wanna play with that a little more. Of the four I tried, this new colors I tried with this treatment, I think this is my favorite. So this would be the same treatment on top, white inside, and this is uh, fire brick red, uh, Amico fire brick red. So I think that's really, really, a nice piece. Uh, I also do a glaze combo I call Icy Blue. And this one uh, is, I'm trying to remember, Norse Blue on the bottom, dipped. Uh, a third white on the top, white inside. And then Blue Hydrangea over the white and also over probably a half inch of the Norse Blue. And then a good globby of flux at the rim. And this probably holds, I don't know, 10 or 11 ounces. So nice for cappuccinos. Um, and then these are the same cups, just smaller, like seven or eight ounces. Same treatment, exactly. And they're all different, of course, because they all drip differently. Um, so these are nice for people who like uh, espresso um, or double espressos and that kind of thing. I do make these tiny little mugs. I call them mini me mugs. So they're great for uh, little hands. I put a nice wide base on them so they don't tip very easily and uh, narrow at the top so they don't spill very easily. Um, or also they're great for uh, espressos too. That's that. Oh, and that's my pink, just my studio pink glaze, which I got on glazy.org. Um, so lots of great recipes there too. You just have to test. That's the thing, right? You have to find something you like and then test it. Cause believe me, I've tested some stuff that's like, oh my God. That did not work. <laughs> so that's the fun part of pottery, though, is you never know. Um, and then when you find something that you really like, it's just so much fun. Um, so this is just a little um, 
I call these uh, chef's cups for wine, stuff you can sip on while you're cooking. Uh, and it's just my studio turquoise with a little bit of uh, winter wood at the top and some flux. So it's very subtle, very, very subtle. So it can be good though. Uh, I have this, this is in my yin and yang, which is my studio black and my studio white. And then just where, and where they meet a strip of um, winter wood and flux. And this little piece, I usually, I call these wine coasters. Um, I use them on my table for that because uh, you don't want to wreck your table with wine drips or water bottle or whatever. Um, but they can also be st spoon holders or whatever people want to use them for. There are no rules, right? It's whatever you want to use it for. And then there's this one. So this is a spoon holder for sure. Also the in the yin and yang. And the last thing I wanted to show you is I've been pecking away at a dinner set for my sister and her husband. Um, plates. Plates are my nemesis. Um, for those of us who aren't very patient potters, uh, plates can be brutal because I always want to try to make things dry faster than they really want to dry. So obviously the trick is to make sure your clay is thick enough that you don't roll it too thin because it, then it's going to warp really easily. Um, all the stuff I've read is like, you know, keep it under plastic, dry it slow, use weights. Uh, so I do all that and it works better now, but occasionally I still have some accidents. But anyway, this is a labor of love because I don't make like making plates um, for the, all those reasons. And um, if anything's going to crack in the kiln, it's going to be a big plate um, just because of the stress and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, uh, this is actually going to be a refire but this is one of the plates I am making her um so this is a dinner plate and this is the plate that the little red dot from the tester bowl jumped to of course <laughs> so I just ground it off and now I'm going to have to put some more white glaze on there and then just refire it so this is my studio blue and I just poured it kind of a free flow pour twice because if I pour it once I feel like I don't get enough of a glaze coverage and then my then white so i do just a strip of white poured once again twice and then uh, my studio green so my sister like me loves blues and greens and earth tones and all those things and then here are a couple of, of just the little same glaze treatment and these are just little sort of breakfast lunch size plates or dessert plates depending on what you use them for the other thing i made her is these little pour cups. So I have my own pottery set that I made for myself and we have these and we use the heck out of them. So um, I made her six. So you can do the, use them for different things. Obviously can you just use them for cream or sugar or if you have a, a, wa a like a milk frother and you're serving coffee, you could put like hot milk in this or steamed milk in it or just cream or milk or whatever. Um, we also use it if we're having um, pancakes or waffles. We'll do individual syrups and we'll warm up the syrups in these. Uh, they're great for uh, melted butter for lobster. We eat lobster here. Um, salad dressings on the side. Uh, so lots of different things you can use these for. So this is just my studio green on the white in the middle, studio green on the bottom, uh, studio blue on the top, and then just some flux. So real simple, um, but lots of nice drippage there. So that's that. I also have made a couple of extra. So I'll show you those if I can find the different ones. Because they look pretty similar, actually. This one is uh, ba, 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 green on the bottom, studio blue on the top, and then a coat of a coyote blue purple, which also has a lot of really nice movement if it's put on top of something. So uh, it's very similar to the other one. It's probably hard for the camera to pick this up, but there's a little bit of purple floating around in there. So that's a nice treatment. And this one is uh, same treatment, green on the bottom, blue on the top, and coyote gunmetal green over the blue. So you can see the movement you can get with that glaze. And this one, last one, would be green on the bottom, blue on the top, and just a little strip of gunmetal green where the two meet. I just wanted to see what happened there. So that was kind of interesting. 
you can see if I just did gunmetal green over the green on a mug or something, that might look really cool. So I think that's all I had to show you for today. I do have a big bis kiln going, so hopefully I'll be able to do another glaze kiln soon if all goes well. <laughs> um, I hope everyone's staying safe and warm and I appreciate you taking time to uh, check out what I do. If you have any questions, let me know um, and uh, have a great day.